If you love the idea of Istio but find it really difficult to get started with, don't worry, you're not alone. How do I know that? Because I used to feel the same just a little while ago. It took me a lot of time to figure out what all needs to be done and what config object does what. What I've done for you is break down the process of adopting and using Istio in three basic steps you can literally write at the back of your hand. Okay, not literally, but you get the point. Before we start, let's have a quick look at the services we intend to deploy in our mesh. This is what it looks like. I know what your first thought is. What's GraphQL doing here? Don't worry, we don't really need GraphQL, but it's really cool and I just couldn't resist the urge. On a more serious note, you can see that we have three services. The first one is the Greeter app. It exposes a single API to greet the name passed in its URL. The response will look something like this. We can change its greeting by modifying an environment variable. The second service is HTTP bin. For those who don't know about it, it's kind of like an echo server which returns whatever it gets in its request. So if I send a POST request with this body, I will get a response which looks something like this. The final one is a GraphQL server which we will use to join the previous APIs together. In other words, it will first fire a call to the Greeter app, get its response, then forward the response to the HTTP bin service and send us back the final response. Like I said, GraphQL is cool. Now because I'm too lazy to write any code, we will use SpaceCloud as our GraphQL server. What? I'm working on weekends here. Give me a break. Okay, so SpaceCloud is a dynamic API server which auto-generates a GraphQL API for us. So we don't have to. I'll put a link to it in the description below. SpaceCloud has a dependency on Redis which has a TCP-based API. That shouldn't be a problem for us because Istio supports working with TCP as well. Okay, all that we saw till now isn't exactly step one. It's just the stuff we'll be putting into our mesh. So we can call it step zero. Step one starts now. We need to write the Kubernetes objects required to deploy our apps. We don't even need to think about Istio at this point. I'll be writing a Kubernetes service and deployment object for each app in our system. Starting with the Greeter app, the service and deployment objects will look something like this. Nothing fancy. I've also passed the environment variable which controls the greeting that will be sent in the response. If any of this is new to you, do check out my Getting Started with Kubernetes guide. You'll find it helpful. Manifest for the HTTP bin will look pretty much the same. All I've done here is change the name, the image, and the ports. Nothing special is happening with Redis either. You can have a look at it. It's all fairly standard. For Space Cloud, there is one tiny change. I've added a config map to hold the config it requires. I must add that this isn't the recommended way to run Space Cloud. But who cares? It works for us. One extra modification that I've done is that its service is of type load balancer for us to access it outside the Kubernetes cluster on port 4122. It's about time that we go ahead and apply these files. Don't worry, you can fire all these YAML files and the commands that I'll be using today in the GitHub repo I have made for you guys. You can test if all of this works by heading over to Postman and firing this query. As you can see, here's the response we got from the Greeter app. And this is what we got from HTTP bin. You've got to admit it, GraphQL is pretty darn cool, isn't it? Let me know in the comments below. Currently, all of this is working without a mesh. It's time we change that. Step number two is installing Istio and enabling it for our namespace. We first need to download the Istio Cuttle binary. Istio Cuttle is a utility to work with Istio just as kubectl is a tool to work with Kubernetes. Extract the archive and make sure the binary is executable. I'm also going to move this binary to my environment path, just making it a little more accessible. Run Istio Cuttle x pre-check to make sure that the cluster is compatible with the version of Istio we want to install. If you're using K3S, Kind, or Minikube, this should work just fine. We can finally install Istio on our cluster. All we need to do is run one simple command. We are running Istio in the demo mode, which automatically enables a bunch of features to make exploration a tad bit smoother. While that's happening, I must add that Istio comes packaged with an ingress gateway which is enabled by default. So make sure you don't have any other service of type load balancer running on port 80 or 443 on your cluster, because that could be a problem. If we examine the output of the Istio Cuttle install command, 
we'll see that a bunch of things have gotten installed for us. Istio Core is nothing but the base CRDs and config files Istio needs as a prerequisite. Istio D is the brain of the service mesh. Its major job in life is to configure the various Envoy proxies. Your application traffic will never even touch it. The ingress and egress gateways manage the traffic coming in and out of your mesh if they were configured to do so. Okay guys, the weirdest thing just happened. We were editing this video and the Istio gods reached out to us asking you to stay because apparently the second half of this video is gonna blow your mind. Also, you need to smash that like button or else they'll tear the entire project down. Back to the video, I guess. Simply installing Istio isn't enough. We need to add a label to our namespace. Adding the Istio injection label will instruct Istio to automatically inject the sidecar proxies for all new pods created in that namespace. As you can see, currently all our pods have a single container running in them. To recreate all pods, we need to trigger a rollout. We can do that by running a single command. This will take some time, but eventually all our pods will have two containers. The new container is our Envoy proxy. Just doing that will put all our apps inside the mesh. Our application will still work just fine, but now all traffic between them will be protected by MTLS. The final step to fully embrace the warmth of Istio is creating the virtual service and destination rule objects. We had spoken about this in the previous video. Starting with the greeter app, specifying a virtual service is pretty straightforward. Specify the domain name of the greeter app with one default route. Simple, right? The destination rule is simple as well. Nothing fancy going on here. One thing to note is that I've enabled mutual TLS explicitly. I'm going to skip straight to Redis since SpaceCloud and HTTP bin have very similar configuration. Redis on the other hand is a TCP server. So we have to make one slight change to account for that. The entire point of adding Redis was to show that Istio works with TCP services as well. Now before I forget, I don't really need to make a virtual service for Space Cloud since no one from within the mesh will be talking to it. So you can technically skip it. Having said that, let's apply the Istio configuration for each app. There you go. And just like that, we have completely moved all our apps to a service mesh. Now granted, we aren't really doing anything special with it and everything is gonna work exactly as it did before. But this is our first step and first steps are super, super important. Now let's do something special, shall we? Let's explore just one tiny feature that Istio unlocks for us. What I wanna show you is called traffic shifting. This is the feature that enables canary deployments. The idea is to simply split incoming traffic between two versions of the same service. This is helpful when you want to test out a new version before you fully deploy it. The advantage we get from Istio is that this split is done by the platform. In other words, we don't really need to write any application code to make any of this work. So let's see this in action by adding a new version of the Greeter app. We need to make just three changes to make all of this work. Wow, three seems to be like a magic number for this video. The first step would be to create a new deployment for the greeter app. Let's make sure we update the version label to v2 and change the greeting to read hello. Step two is to update the existing virtual service for the greeter. This is where the traffic split actually happens. I'm using subsets to select the current version here. And since we are using subsets, the third change is to modify the destination rules to select the correct pods based on the subset. These labels need to match the labels we gave to this pod. Let's quickly apply these changes. Now let's head over to Postman. Notice how the greeting keeps dancing between hi and hello? That's the magic of Istio. We can change the split ratio manually ourselves or use a tool like Argo Rollouts to orchestrate all of this on our behalf. I know I've left out the part to configure the ingress gateway. I'll probably do that in the subsequent video. The objective of this video was to make you comfortable with the beast that we call Istio so that you can try it out for yourself. Trust me, it will be time well spent. Let me know in the comments that you're gonna give it a shot. If you found this video to be helpful, you absolutely need to check out this one which will dive deeper into this ecosystem and take things to the next level. Also, remember to like and subscribe or else the Istio gods
shit.